I don't know if there is a record for the fastest commute to bingo, but I intend to break it. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Outside the Shop where I'm here with my Buick Park Avenue Ultra 2003 given to me by Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. And uh, I wanna make it fast. So I've had this car for about a year now and more or less it, it stayed sort of stock. We put some bigger injectors in it, we upgraded it to E85 and retuned it and we put a smaller pulley, I think a 3.6 or 3.4 down from the stock 3.8 inch pulley. And uh, it's, it's all right. We're probably at about 300 foot pounds of torque right now, but I want more. The transmission on this thing has made noise since I got it. So it's a foregone conclusion that the trans is going to blow in this car like they all do, but might as well send it out with a bang. So what we're gonna do today is some supporting mods to put an even smaller pulley on it. And um, that includes this Kemso 340 liters per hour fuel pump and a uh, transgo shift kit to try and make the transmission live just a little bit longer. Mmm, delicious corn sauce. I got so much of that in my mouth from removing this stupid thing. Well, my mic died, so I didn't really film much of this, but it's really nothing that you haven't seen before. We put a new fuel line on here, stuck in the fuel pump, crimped the wires, and now this is ready to be fed into here. I have to figure out how all this goes. Something like that. There we go. <laughs> okay, uh, the reason for the seemingly excessive amount of fuel line is so that it doesn't uh, exceed its own bend radius. I mean, that does telescope, but it'll probably compress a bit when I put it in there. So that can now go back in the car. And hopefully, hopefully black is negative on both of these. Some, some of these sending units or water pump assemblies can have the, uh, the wiring colors be all weird and you end up with your pump running backwards. So if the car doesn't start, that's the most likely result. Now I've gotta go pound that stupid retention ring back into place, I hate that design. Like the one on my BMW is like plastic, but like you have all the access in the world and it's super easy to get on, I'm ranting. I'm just gonna go through this back in the car now. This part of the video is not that interesting anyway. It's a fuel pump. You've, you've seen it a million times. I've done it a million times on this car. Go in your home. New pump status, mostly installed. Fuel lines are on, electrical connections are on, so hopefully, in theory, the car should start. I think it's priming. Sweet. Welcome to Underneath the Park Avenue. The next step in this is going to be installing the shift kit. Can you even see me around the jack? And don't worry, I do have jack stands. I just also leave the jack under the car because, you know, more safety equals more better. So the next step here is going to be putting in the shift kit, which means we've got to drop the uh, transmission pan here. So it looks like this is just a bunch of tin mills. Uh, and then we have to get out the, not the valve body, this isn't that type of shift kit. This is a transgo shift kit. We gotta take the accumulators out. I mean, there's no way I don't get ATF over, all over absolutely everything. Why can't they just put drain plugs on these? Anyway, the accumulators come out, we put new parts in the accumulators, and the accumulators go back in. Easy peasy. Oh, it's coming. That's some gross looking ATF. Might just let that drip for a little while. Things have taken a turn. I got the pan off and uh, it just kept on dripping. And then when I pulled the filter out, which you just kind of wiggle and pull down, of course that shot out another massive amount of ATF that went everywhere. And then I started unbolting the accumulator piston housings. And of course I dropped one of the bolts right into the completely full oil catch can. Look at that thing, there is, <laughs> oh boy. The thing we're actually interested in, this is the uh, uh, one to two and two to three valve, whatever you call it, accumulator pistons, my gosh. Uh, I don't know, some shifts, who knows. It's a transgo kit. Here's the instructions, here's the springs. Let's, let's make it happen. To get this out, you undo that bolt, that bolt, that bolt and that bolt. Don't undo that bolt. I mean, you can, 
but that's one of the ones that actually holds this whole shebang together because you can see it goes through there so for four bolts to actually remove this and then it'll kind of fall down and there's uh, three kind of hard lines that go in this side here and there's nothing retaining those you just kind of have to wiggle it out well I guess this direction if, if we're looking at it like that but yeah you just wiggle it until it comes out and then more ATF will go everywhere but at this stage we can go ahead and pull this thing apart and do whatever the heck that is. Hopefully. These are all eight mil, by the way. The uh, trans pan itself is 10 mil. Oh God, them boys are torqued. <laughs> what the hell? Um, I didn't expect to find that. The accumulate, the stock accumulator spring is broken. I'm not sure how much that would be affecting performance since, I don't know, it probably does affect the spring rate to some extent, but maybe that's why this thing shifted like absolute crap before we tuned it. Please tell me I don't have to reuse any of these springs because uh, that's not an option right now. Oh, and look at all the gunk in there. Holy crap, this gasket's reusable by the way. It is metal. Do I take that out? I don't think I take that out. Yeah, no, that stays in, I think. Oh no, these are reused. Yeah, these are the springs we're replacing. These plain springs go on either side. And then we have red spring, which goes, let me, let's see here, it goes this side. This is kind of weird how you just kind of stack, stack these springs up. And then a white spring goes inside on both sides. Stack O springs. Okay, so that all goes down in there. And then we have on this side, let's see, on this side, long spacers, so these brass ones, go here. Oh, right in the face. Oh, you know what, I probably should do it like that. That one seems to be seated, right? Okay, and then this goes in the third gear one. Except, my third gear one has this busted ass spring. Now I get to figure out where in the heck I can acquire one of these from. Please don't call the EPA on me. Anyway, went to uh, see Zeph, and he, of course, has a dozen of these transmissions sitting around, so we can go ahead and get rid of that, because we were just able to dig one right out of his. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was sitting in penetrating oil all night to actually get that out. I'm gonna wash this off a bit before it goes in the new trans, cause uh, this trans that this uh, valve body or accumulator body came out of was completely full of water. So let's clean that. And uh, let's see, I cleaned in here, but I haven't cleaned all the gunk out of the uh, cap there. So I'm gonna clean all this stuff up and then we can throw this back together and attend to whatever absolute disaster is going on over here. Hey, look at that. It's a complete unit now. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, hang on. Where's my screwdriver? There we go. So let's take a look at this trans pan over here because look at that. Let's see if I can zoom in on it there. That's the magnet. I'm told this is uh, pretty normal for a trans with this many miles, but my gosh, if there's that much metal on the uh, magnet, how much is left in the trans itself? Also, that's a, that's a pretty large shard there. So, yeah, we'll try and get most of that off of there. And uh, also, I've got one of these. Now, this is a uh, General Motors TSB magnet. This goes, it, it's, they, they actually recalled, well, not really recall, but there's a technical service bulletin to put a second magnet in the transmission and this one attaches to the filter which i have a new one here so this will just stick on there or something like that but now i've got the car jacked up and don't worry i do have jack stands i just like to have leave the jack under there because might as well so let's get uh, this thrown back in there and that buck up in there and since we're not really doing this on a lift i can't really show any of that so i'll just go get it done
Well, I'm sure you can't see it very well, but there is a trans pan on there now. There's also that pedal right there is right where my head was. Somehow this thing continued to just drip the whole time I was underneath it. So now we're finally done underneath the car. Yay, now it's time to drive it. Just kidding, it's time to put trans fluid in it. And also swap out the pulley for the one that I have. Uh... Oh gosh, there, there it is. There's our new pulley and the associated belt, which I just got ATF on. Okay, got the battery out. <laughs> now, let's see, we need to break these loose first. So what is that? I'm gonna say it is a five millimeter. Jake, how are you so smart? T50 on the tensioner. Yeah, okay. I've just reached an epiphany. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Fine in big air quotes, but fine nonetheless. Now if I can remember just how to feed this guy through. Um, oh, I'm stupid. Here's a pro tip. The air conditioning is not run by the supercharger belt. That also seems incorrect. Oh, wait, no. No, that's right. Belt on. Belt kind of on. There we go. Belt actually on now. Now it's actually time for the battery and ATF. I still hate this battery cable system. It's just like the supercharger itself. Jim was like, yeah, what if we run all the cables over it? Just so that they act like an extra tie down and make it super difficult to get everything back out again. Wonderful. Well, this garbage uses Dextron, what is that, six? So uh, I got to spend big dollars today. I think the idea here is add a gallon, or sorry, four quarts, and uh, check your work. Spicy, but we might be able to check the trans fluid now, so I'm probably just gonna do that off camera and make sure everything's all copacetic and move some cars so I can get this thing out. So just driving along, it seems to shift pretty much the same, maybe just a little bit, little tighter, uh, but I don't know if that's placebo, honestly, because it's been so long since I've really driven this car. I'm interested in a knock retard mostly because I really want to know if this thing is pulling timing because if so then well I got to pull some timing out of the out of the maps I mean I'm running on stock timing right now which with a 3.4 inch pulley that was perfect we fiddled around for ages adding and removing some timing here and there but factory was just what it liked the best with that setup but let's see what we get here now cars up to temp holy shit. so that made about 15 PSI at three-quarter throttle, but I did get 4.8 degrees of KR, so we're going to need a tune. Uh, the torque steer is amazing. Let's uh, let's hit this on-ramp here, see if I can keep it out of the KR. Yeah, right at 13 PSI, we start to get some KR. Oh, wow, there's a lot of traffic. This thing now makes 10 PSI at, like, 10% throttle. I haven't even looked at the speedometer to see what my acceleration is like. Ridiculous is the answer. It does look like I'm getting some false KR. Uh, I just let off the gas and I got some, so that's a bit interesting. On the plus side, the trans feels as healthy as I've ever felt one of these. So I think mission accomplished there. I heard a pop and then it stopped reading boost. That'll do it. <laughs> Guess I need to put some reinforcing zip ties around that uh, that line there. All the other ones did okay, but 
I think I'm going to start finding the weak points in the stuff. So you've got this line down here that tees off. I don't know if you can see any of this, but there's this line down here and that's got pressure. It goes to the fuel pressure regulator and the uh, uh, manifold air pressure sensor back there. And that's it. I took the uh, bypass solenoid nonsense out of the equation. Other than that, it's a pretty good time. I think what the shift kit mostly affected was the kick down. It's a lot more aggressive now. Either way, I'm pretty happy. This thing is, uh, it's quick now. <laughs> I'll be very interested to get this thing tuned and hopefully uh, find a dyno. I think there's only one dyno outfit in town and they're very expensive. So I might have to see if I can work out a deal with them. Otherwise, road trip to a dyno to maybe blow up the car. Who knows? Thanks for watching.